What are we talking about? We're back with another episode of Sledhead 24-7, where we are everything snowmobile. I'm your host, Carly Applin, coming to you from Pro Power Sports and Marine in Ramsey, Minnesota. Lots on display here, and we're going to catch up with the crew a little later. But first, let's check out a sled that was built to bang ditches and tear up the trail. What can I say about Articat ZR8000RR? Snowcross on steroids. This is the 800cc power plant with the Snowcross style suspension. This thing would be the lead dancer at any ditch banger's ball. It's one of the fastest 800s we have in our fleet. The thing handles, it rides nice, but one thing it really likes to do is eat up the bumps. And they gave it to us to go out and ride it and put it through the paces as hard as we possibly can. I've been trying to break this thing. We've been trying to ride this thing hard, punish this, and it still keeps going. Time again for a little ride and talk. You know, you, one thing, hard to cat, they don't skip. When it comes to like suspension, they went with the best. They put the Fox Float X Evos on this sled. What makes them so nice is the Fox Shocks, they make it so adjustable. So from how you ride, like say you're on trail riding, you want a little less ski pressure, back your main chamber off a little bit, softens the front, makes it easier to steer. You want to bite in the corners, or say you're, you're stroking through, you're feeling like you're bottoming out when you're really crushing big bumps, then what you do, add a little more air. That easy. You know, it is a very versatile sled. You can do a lot of things with it, but the guy who's gonna enjoy this sled with this suspension is a guy who wants to go up, hit the bumps harder, sail farther than his buddies, just have a good time running hard. You know, the sled says it all, 8,000 RR. Race, replica. You know, with the Fox shocks, they're one of the most adjustable shocks in the industry. You have your main chamber for your air, for your main ride. You have your evil chamber, which is like your bottom out, to stiffen it up on hard, big crashes into the bumps. You have clicker, compression dampening clickers, as well as rebound dampening. You can dial these in to suit any rider's needs. You know, the throttle response on this machine is second to none. These 800 Articat two-stroke motors are just spot on. The mapping, the clutching, they do a fantastic job of setting it up. The person who wants to go out and push the limits, ride it hard, the RR is a chassis for you. Now keep it locked right here for the latest and the greatest in the world of snowmobiling. Plenty more ahead on Sledhead 24-7 as we follow T-Train Tucker Hibbert as he reaches win number 100. Plus, we compare a couple sleds from Skidoo and take a destination ride at Carl Cooster's Mountain Park in British Columbia. Stay tuned. Sledhead 24-7 is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Polaris, terrain domination. Skidoo Snowmobiles. And by Articat. Share our passion. Welcome back to Sledhead 24-7. Joining me is Randy Blomley from Pro Power Sports and Marine, and we just want to tell everyone what you have to offer here. Well, we offer a great lineup of Power Sports items, Sea-Doo, Skidoo, Can-Am, Polaris, and Suzuki, and great customer service to our customers. Uh, service department is great, parts department is great, and uh, something for everybody here at Pro Power. It really is fun for the entire family year-round, right? Yes, ma'am. And we want you to get down here and check it out, but now it's time to check in with our tech expert, Jeff Fisher, as he compares a couple sleds from Skidoo. We're out riding and evaluating some new products. Today we have the new 
Skidoo XRS 800 Renegade, and along next to it is the uh, Skidoo MXZ X 800. Both new 15s, they both have the new Raz 2 front ends. What we're gonna do is compare for you guys what we like and what we don't like. You know, one of the first things when you look at the two sleds, what you notice is a little more real estate on the back of the Renegades. What it is because you're comparing a 120 track to a 137 track. Now granted, that's 17 inches of total track. You gotta remember your footprint is gonna be just eight and a half inches. The first thing I notice from going with a little longer track is traction and also bridging the bumps. You get them small stutter bumps, the longer track will bridge them. You don't get it, it doesn't kick in as easy in comparison to the shorter track. And I know some of you are paying attention here that we have an XRS 800 Renegade compared to an X. Well, true, but what that is doing too, the XRS is valved a little heavier, a little stiffer, so the faster and the rougher it gets, the more fun it is. The X model still takes the bumps very nice, but a little more plush, a little more trail friendly as far as just nice, easy riding. Basically, we're more focusing on the track length, the 120 to a 137, you right away think you have more traction, that you're gonna get more front end push, which, yeah, anytime you put more track on the ground, you're gonna get more drive, which in the corners, what's it gonna do? Wanna push you forward. Skidoo's pretty much answered the question, in my opinion, with the new Raz 2 front end. It is so simple to dial it in a little bit, it doesn't push like you would think. I get asked a lot, you know, people asking me about the 120 to the 137. In my opinion, if you're trail riding, groom trail riding, uh, lake, everything, ditches, the short track 120 is great. Guys who want to go off trail riding, a little bit rougher riding, the Renegade 137's a no-brainer. So really, bottom line is 127, 137. In my opinion, I think the 137's are becoming the new short tracks. We know it can be hard to find what works for you, so head over to the Skidoo website where you can build, compare models, and find a local dealer. We all like to ride before we buy. Still ahead on Sledhead 24-7, it's been a record-breaking year for Tucker Hibbert. We follow T-Train as he reaches 100 wins. Plus, experience endless powder in British Columbia at Carl Kuster's Mountain Park. Stay tuned. Sledhead 24-7 is brought to you by Stud Boy. Traction with an attitude. Straight line performance. Ziegler Cat, exceptional service backing the best equipment. The U.S. Air Force, aim high. And by Speedworks, straight up USA horsepower. I'm Carly Applin, your guide to everything snowmobile. Time now to give you a taste of a snowmobiler's paradise as we head to CKMP. Carl Cooster's Mountain Park in beautiful British Columbia. Put that thing away, let's go riding. It's gonna be a good day. We got a bunch of snow coming and deep powder and it's gonna be, uh, be fun, uh, fun power riding for sure. The first thing you notice when you walk into CKMP is it is first class. This is something that's very well thought out. Took them a while to put it together and it's well worth it. When we were building CKMP, it was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. We pretty much uh, built it ourselves and had lots of friends come and help. And I just want the, the best experience possible for when people come here. You know, I've been to a lot of places riding with a lot of people and kind of behind the scenes stuff, but this is by far like the best experience I've had yet. The snow is great, the food's great, the lodging is just second to none. If you've never been here, get out of here. Yeah, no, I've never had a problem with that. Sometimes I do, like, I do the reach around a lot. Hey guys, when you have a sec, uh, two, we'll do paperwork. We gotta sign our waivers, release forms, all that fun stuff. Part of this whole thing, you need to fill out waivers. You know, we can't you, you understand what you're renting, what's going on out there. So there's a good checklist uh, just to understand 
understand what they what the guides expect from you as well as what we expect from the guides. So before we head out every day, we look uh, at Avalanche Canada. Tree line considerable, and below tree line, it's considerable also. He's going to provide you with the snowmobile, and he's going to have mountain gear. A lot of people don't have the mountain gear, the Abbey bags, the beacons, the shovels, the probes, everything you need to be safe out in the mountains, they have it here for you. Okay, so we're going to go over the beacons. Pretty simple. It's, you can tell that it's, it even fits in the case, and it's flush here. That's off. So you want to just switch it on to send right now. You can pull it out, switch it on to send. If you switch that thing into search. So you're on search or But I just want you to be able to at least take it out and understand how to turn it on to search. So you always want to wear your beacon low like this so you can get at it. When you get to the probe and you can just let it go. It's not dangling from inside your jacket or whatever. At CKMP, we're going up into the hills once again. We're going right and we're going to get stuck. <laughs> Riding with Carl Kuser, is, it's been awesome. He's such an amazing rider and you know he takes the time to point out the things that he sees in your riding and teaches you you know what you should be doing, shouldn't be doing. Usually what I do is once we get out on the mountain, you can tell, you know, in a couple of minutes, you know, what different people need different help with. So the trick is have your foot back there, kneel into that panel and then just put your weight, keep it counter steered so it's kind of in your space, and then just control it with your body weight. The whole point is to conserve energy and not have to use a bunch of energy, and that's why they, you know, have engineered it. So you stand in the right spot and just give it a little bit of throttle, and boom. We're just gonna roll over the crest over here. Some more pow fields to trip. It'll be super fun. All the groups that come, we usually get a uh, big diversity in the ability of the people or skill or experience. It's just fun being out with a group of people that are all, you know, share the same passion and really into it. Helping everybody, you know, even if it's their first time or if they've been out here 10, 20 times. Yet the guys with more experience starting to help the guys with less experience and it all kind of, it's a team effort to get a day done out in the mountains here for sure. You learn so much from them guys just, you know, by being with them, you know, they point out things that would, you know, most guides wouldn't. We got a chance to ride with Sled Edge 24-7 crew and it was, it was a great time. Always laughing, smiling, it was, it was really fun. I just want to thank everyone here at CKMP for making it possible for the Sled Head 24-7 crew to come out here. It's really about enjoying the day and you couldn't ask for a better crew to ride with. We had a great time out there on the hill. Thank you very much and I hope we invite us back. Huh, look at that, eh? CKMP is truly a must ride destination. The accommodations are second to none, the powder is endless and the guides are awesome. Still ahead on Sledhead 24-7, we catch up with nine-time gold medalist Tucker Hibbert and Team 68 as they go for 100 Pro National Snowcross wins. But time now to check in with Amsoil, the first in synthetics. One of my favorite things on a Monday morning is to get together at work and we talk about the weekend's ride. And without a doubt, somebody always brings up the fact that they got first tracks on a fresh green trail. So it got us to thinking back at Amsoil, what goes into that? What do we need to get that fresh groom trail experience? So we went to the range trail committee and we asked them, what are you guys experiencing with your groomers that any kind of problems that we can help you with? First of all, there's 22,000 miles of groom trail in Minnesota. Range trail is in charge of 52 miles of it. When they're grooming, they're out at night they're out in the extreme cold temperatures. And the first thing they told us was that the hydraulics don't work until we're seven to eight miles down the trail. So we got to thinking, we do what we do at Amsoil, and we looked at the needs of this groomer. How can we help? So we looked at the fluid that was in it, and it obviously wasn't doing what it needed to do. 
we looked at our cold temperature products and our cold temperature hydraulic oil and we swapped it out. One of the first things they saw was the hydraulic oil worked immediately. The hydraulics came to life, no need to drive down the trail. Everything was working like it should right from the start. So smooth trails means happy riders, which means more riders, which means that's good for the businesses, that's good for the towns, that's good for everybody. These guys are out there every day working, providing that trail experience for the rider. For more information on our cold weather products, check out amsoil.com. Sledhead 24-7 is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Arctic FX Graphics, make it yours. Fox, redefining ride dynamics. And by FXR, world-class outerwear. Welcome back to Sledhead 24-7. I'm your host, Carly Applin. Time now to catch up with Monster Energy Articat Pro Snowcross racer Tucker Hibbert and Team 68 as he breaks 100 national wins. It'd be almost an impossible goal for a lot of people. Um, I don't think there was a lot, a lot of thought about it until you know this year when we started approaching it, and then when you start thinking about it, it's a pretty big, pretty big mark. And of course, one of the great storylines here in Deadwood is that Tucker Hibbert is still looking for his historic 100th victory, Levi. Yeah, that's right. You know, 100 wins. It's been tough for him. You know, the last couple races haven't gone to plan for him. Tucker Hibbert has gone off his sled while running seconds. He admitted to me that was a mistake in round five that kept him off of the podium. He said he's going to learn from that, take it into tonight, and if it's possible, ride even harder for that 100th win. Tucker Hibbert having a bad hole shot way in the back of the field. And trying to become Mr. 100, looking highly unlikely he'll get that done tonight here at Canterbury. Welcome Snowcross fans to the Deadwood Snowcross Shootout. A short track that doesn't exactly sit at the top of his list of types of tracks to race on. And we are racing in Deadwood! Tucker, not too bad a position right now. Tucker Hibbert is one win away from 100. The only person between him and 100 wins is 53, Cody Cam. Tucker's reeling him in. Cody Cam holds on for the win. And I honestly think that was the first time in many, many years that someone has been able to beat Tucker straight up. The 100th win ended up being, you know, a lot more emotional and a lot more power to it the way it ended up because it kind of eluded us for three races and about, what, a three-week period. It was interesting when he said that he gave it its all last night, but I'll tell you what, things like what happened in round number seven motivate him, and it'll be interesting to see what he can do here in round number eight. And we are racing in Deadwood! Tucker Hibbert to the inside! Tucker down in the corner and Tremblay into the back of him. I want to back up one year ago, though, when Tucker came from the back of the field to win on this very racetrack. We're going to need to keep an eye on him. Tucker Hibbert now in ninth place. There's Tucker Hibbert. The T-Train has moved himself into fifth place after total destruction on the first lap. Hibbert sitting in third place. There's Tucker Hibbert to the inside of Kyle Pauline. It's Pauline and Hibbert. Ross Martin just in front of him. Tucker right on Ross Martin's tail. And Tucker Hibbert has taken the lead in pursuit of 100 wins. Tucker Hibbert has done it here in Deadwood. Watching him ride that way is absolutely amazing. What happened in Deadwood was just something that we'll never forget. And for him to get up and put on a charge like that, of course, made it extremely exciting and powerful. 100 wins is amazing, you know. It's, uh, it's a lot of races, and uh, I'm thankful for every single one of them, the wins and the losses, you know. Um, 
these guys standing behind me, my team been behind me 100%. Can't thank them enough. Got to thank God for uh, giving me the talent. Tucker Hibbert is the greatest snowcross racer of all time today, without a doubt. His ability to read the course and to really get up on the handlebars, I mean, it showed immediately. This kid is something special. It's not that he could go faster than them, but he was much more dedicated. He dedicates everything to it. He sacrifices a lot. Whatever it takes to, to get that goal is, is what's done. 100 feature wins for the first time in the history of Anzoil Championship Snowcross. Tucker Hibbert is dominating out on the track. The competition this season is remarkable, but he remains focused and poised in every single race. Young riders, take note. Well, that's all the time we have for you for this episode of Sledhead 24-7. If you've missed an episode or want to get caught up in the world of snowmobiling, make sure to like us on Facebook. We want to give a big thank you to Pro Power Sports and Marine in Ramsey, Minnesota for having us out today. And from all of us here at Sledhead 24-7, ride safe and we'll see you next week.